Hi everyone, welcome to Impact Academy. Let us continue with the Economy uh, Question and Answer session. So last class we have seen till fifth question. Let us continue with the sixth one. So which of the following statements best describes the term base erosion and profit shifting? So first let us try to understand what is base erosion and profit shifting. It refers to tax planning strategy that exploit gaps in tax rules of some countries to artificially shift profits to low or no tax locations. So, if you look at uh, uh, various systems in India or all over the country, uh, what happens is you have these uh, Mauritius, Cayman Islands, okay, frequently you hear in the news. So, what happens is a company, if it has a headquarters in India, suppose, so whatever profit it gets, it has to pay a certain tax on that profit, right? If this everyone is aware. So, what these companies will do is they will say, we have our headquarters not in India, but we have our headquarters in uh, say Mauritius, okay, or Cayman Islands, or uh, Panama Islands, etc, etc, where uh, the tax, uh, what you say, the tax rate is very low and uh, the government uh, control is very low. So, here suppose they get 1000 crores profit, you have to pay suppose uh, 300 crores tax, example. So, what they will do is, they will shift their headquarters to somewhere in uh, say Cayman Islands. There they will have to pay a tax of only say uh, 100 to 100 crores or something and uh, they will give a lot of bribes etc. So they need not pay 300 crores. And they will say because we are headquartered in Cayman Islands, all our profit is going back to Cayman Islands. Okay. So that is how in spite of not having any significant economic activity in that uh, what you say that tax haven, this is what is called as tax haven. So in order to escape paying tax here in this country, you are saying that you are headquartered in some other country, etc. and you are sending all the money back. Okay, so that is, so what is happening is there is a, a base erosion and profit shifting. So that profit which should have actually come to India, okay, if, if the company is, uh, what you say, in India, it will pay the tax here. But now because it is in somewhere, based somewhere else, so there is a base erosion and profit shifting. So, it means a company shifts to a jurisdiction like Mauritius or Ireland, okay. So, there are few company, uh, few countries like this, okay, which are uh, known as tax havens. So, where tax rates are very low, okay, and uh, you can, I mean, uh, it is common knowledge that you can uh, give bribes, etc. and uh, not get too many uh, uh, problems, etc. So, you need not follow many regulations and uh, instead of paying so much tax, you can save on the tax. But the governments of these countries, okay, where the business is actually happening. So, if you are earning the 1000 crores, you are earning the 1000 crores because you are doing business in India, for example. So, all the money is coming from here and that 25% or 30% tax has to go to the country. It will be used for the benefit of the country in building roads, okay, building hospitals, etc. So, um, base erosion and profit shifting is one form of a, you can say, a criminal law. Uh, economic fraud also. Now, let us look at the question. Which one of the following statements best describes this term BEPS? Set of pl tax planning strategies that exploit gaps in tax rules to artificially shift profits to low or no tax locations. Okay. So, this is correct. The first statement is, uh, so what they are doing is, they are shifting the profits to some other uh, low or no tax locations like Mauritius, Ireland, Cayman Islands, etc. And they are exploiting the gaps in the tax system. So, obviously, the first one is right. Okay. So, the answer is A. Okay. Now, let us look at the next question. So, in the first question also, we have seen about human development index, right? So, one thing you have to remember, both HDI and we have also seen multidimensional poverty index, right? Both these things have basically three standards. That is, one thing is uh, income, also equated with standard of living, education and health. So, education means years of schooling and expected years of schooling and health means life expectancy at birth. So, the HDI, MPA, uh, multi, uh, all these indexes, they are taking into consideration these three uh, dimensions. Okay, health, how much health Okay, the population has how much education they are getting and what is their standard of living. So, the HDA encapsulates 
various dimensions such as health, education, standard of living. So, this is the true statement. Next one. <laughs> The HDI uses a simple arithmetic mean to aggregate the scores for the three HDI dimension indices. So, if you observe in the HDI, they do not use the arithmetic mean; they use a geometric mean. Okay, uh, whatever information they collect regarding these three indices, the health, education, and standard of living, they use geometric geometric mean. Okay, these are all techniques of statistics because you collect a sample of thousand. And then you have to uh, interpolate or extrapolate the sample to the whole country. So, uh, I mean, a uh, lot of statistic techniques are uh, used in uh, calculating populations and several of these indexes because uh, no organization can go and uh, find out uh, from all the uh, population. If you want to see what is the health condition of the population, you cannot go to each and everyone. So, they take a sample and after that, they use uh, some statistical uh, techniques to extrapolate it to whole population. So, remember this point that HDI employs a geometric mean, not arithmetic mean. And also this geometric mean reflects the idea that a balanced development across these dimensions is more desirable than skewed development. Which means, uh, for example, the population is having uh, good education. Okay, People are well educated, people are having high standard of living. Everyone is having a house, car, bungalow, everything. But most people are suffering from health Okay, most people are suffering from health issues, diabetes, etc. So, that is not considered as a human development, uh, development index. So, your ranking will come below. So, what it tries is to have a balanced development. That means, people should have good health, good education and good income and standard of living. So, the HDI includes inequalities, poverty and human security and provides a complete assessment of human development. So, now we have already seen that the HDI includes health, education and standard of living. But it does not particularly uh, contain factors like inequality, poverty, human security, etc. Okay. It uh, focuses on health, education and standard of living. So, try to remember that. If you know what are the three dimensions of HDI, you can easily make out that there is a, it does not include inequalities, poverty, human security, etc, etc. So, the HDI gives increasing importance to income with rising gross national income. So, everybody knows what is GNI GDP, right? Gross uh, GDP means gross domestic product, okay? GNI is gross national income. So, importance to income with rising GNI. Now, in order to understand this, try to understand this. For example, if a person is having a uh, salary is 10,000 rupees, okay? So, if your salary is 10,000 rupees and you give him 10,000 rupees separately, okay? So, that 10,000 rupees is equal to his full month salary. So, the value of the 10,000 rupees is very high to him. On the other hand, if there is another person who is having salary of 1 lakh, okay? If you give 10,000 rupees to that person, to him, it is like giving, uh, what is it, just, uh, I mean, uh, just like some change or something. So, for a person who is having 10,000 salary, giving 10,000 is like giving him a lot of money. On the other hand, for someone who is having 1 lakh salary, giving 10,000. Here, the amount is same. Both cases, it is 10,000 and 10,000. But for this person who is already earning 1 lakh, 10,000 is considered as a small amount. Okay. So, once your income levels rise, then the supplementary income that is coming does not have more import, importance. Okay. So, with rising gross national income, the importance of the income reduces. For example, you are already having a very high GNI, then the extra income that comes does not have so much importance. So, the HDI uses logarithm of income as an adjustment to reflect the diminishing importance of income with increasing GNI. You understood, right? If your GNI is already high, then the value of the income that is coming is reducing. Just like how you are giving 10,000 rupees to a 1 lakh uh, person who is earning 1 lakh. He will, the value of the 10,000 will reduce in front of the 1 lakh. Fine. Thus you can see. So, in this particular case, you can see, uh, first one is right, right? This is wrong and uh, this is wrong and this is wrong. So, only one. So, answer will be A. Yeah. 
So answer is A. Now let us go to the eighth question. So these are uh, more like you can say economic general knowledge type of questions. Okay, it's not exactly related to any current uh, trends, but you never know such a question can be asked. So it is always better to have some idea. So which of the following best describes the misery index developed by Arthur Oaken? So the misery index was given by Arthur Oaken in the 1970s. It is the unemployment rate added to the inflation rate. So uh, inflation is, for example, if today the price of a uh, apple is 10 rupees, tomorrow the price of an uh, apple is 12 rupees. So there is the inflation. Okay, uh, it has changed from 10 rupees to 12 rupees. So if it becomes 20 rupees, that means there is 100 percent inflation. So 10 has become double. So that is inflation and unemployment rate. When people are not employed, uh, it will be uh, considered as unemployment. Okay. Now consider this: if you are employed and if you are getting salary. So, if the apple is 10 rupees, you will purchase it. And if the apple becomes 20 rupees also, you will not feel uh, too much misery because even at 20 rupees, you can purchase it. But if you are unemployed, if you don't have any salary, then if the apple is 10 rupees, you will struggle to buy it. But if it becomes 20 rupees, you will be really become miserable to buy it. Okay. So, that is, remember it that way. Misery index is it is a combination of unemployment plus inflation, which is a very deadly combination for the common uh, people. So, it is based on the belief that higher rate of unemployment and worsening inflation intensifies the misery. Okay? As such, inflation is tough to deal, unemployment is tough to deal. But if you combine both of them, then it will become a misery. That is what Arthur Open said in the 1970s itself. And that is what he has given in the misery index. So, it is the unemployment rate added to the inflation rate. So, option A again. Okay, that is the answer. So, let us go to the ninth question. So, these are some of the taxes and uh, their descriptions. Add value on tax, it is levied as a percentage of the value of a good or service, which is true. And specific tax, it is fixed per unit of good. Fine. So, let us try to understand what he is trying to say. Now, add value on tax is levied as a percentage of the value of the item irrespective of the item size. For example, you have a copper uh, copper vessel. Okay. You have two vessels. Okay. Two copper vessels. And one copper vessel belongs to the um, ancient uh, kings. Okay. Many thousands of years back. And another copper vessel has been uh, recently manufactured in an industry. So, this copper vessel, which has been recently manufactured, say it will cost around uh, 800 rupees. Okay. But this copper vessel, which belongs to the historical uh, dynasty, it is an antique piece, right? So, it will cost in uh, crores. Let us say it costs around uh, 30 40 crores. Okay. So, both are copper vessels, both are one unit, both have same weight, okay, same quantity, size, everything. But the value of uh, one copper vessel is 800 rupees. The value of the other copper vessel is uh, 20 crores. So, if you are going for specific tax. So, in case of a specific tax, on both the copper vessels, the tax will be say 10%. So, in this case, uh, uh, I mean if you are taking the, uh, based on the uh, fixed as per unit of gold. So, for copper vessel, you are saying the tax is 100 rupees. So, whether the value of the copper vessel is 800 rupees or 20 crore, the tax you are con uh, collecting is based on each unit of gold. Okay. So, that is specific tax. You are, you are taxing the unit of good or service, not on the value. But add value on tax is you are taking the tax on a percentage of the value of the item. So, in the case of 800 rupees copper vessel, say you are taking uh, 100 rupees tax. On the 20 crore vessel, you are taking uh, uh, say 2 crore as a tax. So, when the value of the items are hugely different, then add value on tax is applied. But if you are talking about goods, for example, there are 100 copper vessels uh, manufactured in a factory. So, more or less they are all of same, uh, uh, what you say, unit or uh, same value. So, in such a case, specific taxes are applied. So, each unit you collect 10 rupees, 10 rupees tax, uh, something like So, uh, now you have understood what is the difference between add value on tax and specific tax. Now, if you look at a regressive tax, what are regressive tax? 
okay there are taxes where tax percentage decreases with increase in income so uh, most of the time if you look at the tax bracket they say uh, if you are within 5 lakhs or 8 lakhs there is no tax okay from 8 to 10 lakhs there is a uh, say 10 percent tax so 10 lakhs to 50 lakhs there is uh, say 20 percent so as the income increases the percentage of tax will increase so that is called as progressive tax progressive tax is tax where the tax percentage increases with increase in income so in some other cases you might say um, so as the income increases the percentage of tax will decrease for example <laughs> in several of these uh, gift taxes or uh, some of these uh, uh, there are several uh, taxes where once you cross a certain threshold the amount of tax will reduce especially in some savings suppose you are saving uh, uh, below 1 crore there may be some tax as the amount increases so the tax may decrease in some cases okay that is called as regressive tax so if you look at the question add value on tax it is levied as a percentage of the value of a good okay not the weight or uh, not the number of units based on the value which is kept okay specific tax it is fixed per unit of good okay so which is also true we are saying that specific tax is it is fixed as per the units of good regressive tax increases so this is wrong regressive tax is tax percentage decreases with an increase in income okay and progressive tax is tax percentage increases with increase in income so these two are wrong so only two so option will be b so option b is the right answer fine let us look at the 10th question so consider the following statements about capitalism and free market so if you study the basics of economy so adam smith is uh, one of the most famous uh, economists adam smith the theory of adam smith all uh, are very popular and he says that there are two major economic systems one is the capitalism and another is the free market economy so and the other is the, what you say the socialist economy where uh, everything is under the uh, this communist ideology where everything is controlled by the government but under uh, what is a free market and capitalism there is no such thing as uh, government intervention completely okay it is a free market so under capitalist what happens is it is focused on creation of wealth okay capitalism is focusing on creation of wealth and ownership of productive assets the free market economy on the other hand is focused on exchange of wealth okay try to remember this capitalism focus on creation of more wealth and free market economy focused on exchange of wealth okay so in a capitalist system there might be some government regulation and but private owners can have monopoly on the market and thus prevent competition so for example if you take case of india you could say india is a capitalist system because in india um, for example there is a free market yes uh, if you have a product uh, suppose you have um, uh, what you say you have a car okay you can price the car at 10 lakhs 15 lakhs 20 lakhs which is your wish so there is a some form of a uh, what you say your uh, private uh, market and uh, demand and supply is there but for example uh, if in that particular category all the cars are between 7 lakhs to 10 lakhs so you want to come and destroy the competition and you say a similar kind of car i am going to sell at 2 lakhs okay then the government will not allow and we have several uh, statutory quasi judicial bodies like uh, the competition commission of india so in such a case you can go and complain to the competition commission of india and they will uh, look at what is happening so for example if, in a, if a smaller example if a particular item is being sold for 100 rupees and uh, if you sell it at 20 rupees you are going to get a huge loss but in order to destroy the competition you try to uh, sell it at 20 rupees so that everyone will start using your product they will get used to it and then they will stop buying the competition and the competition will be wiped out then later you will increase the 20 rupees to again uh, 70 rupees okay so uh, that is a frequent uh, what is a, uh, in marketing terminology also it is called as market penetration so basically you are trying to penetrate the market by low prices 
So within a uh, limit, it is fine. But beyond the limit, it is not allowed by the uh, government. So this form of government regulation is called as a capitalistic uh, economy. On the other hand, in a free market economy, there is absolutely uh, no government regulation, very little or no government regulation. So completely your wish. If you want to come and sell for 20 rupees, your wish, demand and supply. That is why uh, capitalism is focused on creation of wealth, while uh, free market economy is focused on exchange of wealth through production and supply of goods and services. Okay, so that is why in a free market economy, free competition is possible without any intervention from outside forces. So it is completely free market. Whatever you want, you can sell it for hundred rupees, two hundred rupees. It is completely your wish. And those who are buying, if they have the demand, they will buy. If they, no one is buying, obviously after some time you will reduce the price. So that is demand and supply. There is absolutely uh, little or no government regulation. So try to remember all these points. Now. Consider the following statements about capitalism and free market economy. Capitalism is focused on the creation of wealth and the free market economy is focused on the exchange of wealth. So, which is true, we just saw capitalism is focused on the creation of wealth. On the other hand, free market economy is focused on the exchange of wealth. In a capitalist system, there might be some government regulation, which is true. Example, you have a competition commission of India, etc. On the other hand, Free market economy is solely based on market forces, which is true. So, in this case, uh, both one or two. So, option C would be the answer. Okay, option C is the answer. So, let us continue in the next class.